Welcome to today's webinar on 2017 Modeling Enhancements. My name is Laura Hackle and I will be covering a number of enhancements, including the new Display Options window, Model Dimensions, Selection Filter Options, Status Select, Components, Copying Members Between Jobs, and much more. You can type in your questions during the webinar and I will answer them at the end. The first thing we're going to cover is the Display Options. So if I open up the display options window, you'll see that the display options for modeling and drawing editor have been upgraded to not only include new items, but to allow some additional filtering as well. First, you'll see that the display options has been reorganized. There is now a tree over on this left-hand side here that will be uh, updated based off the item status of on or off. So for example, this construction circles, you'll see it over on the left-hand side in the tree. If I uncheck it, then it disappears out of the tree. The items that appear in the tree will have more advanced options available for filtering than what's above. So you'll see over on the left side that we have members in the tree to the left. Then we have members down below, so this will be more advanced options. If I just want to show my sequence that's in sequence one, I can uncheck the other ones and hit apply so those ones show up. Then I could come over and I want to filter that even more and just see my beams. I could do all of them except for beams or only my beams showing. And so now you'll just see that my beams are there. If the left or over on my left of the tree, there is members and then they'll have an I by it. That will mean that it is different from what is default. You'll also see wherever on the side or in the middle here where it says members that are red, that means that it is different from default as well. If you want all of these to get checked back on, I can hit the select all button that's right next to members and that will reselect everything. If before I do that, if I wanted to save this for a later use, I could go ahead and save down at the very bottom here. That's going to save everything, or I can save the specific sections as well. I could save that just for my members, or I could save just for my general settings. I'm going to come in here and just do select all and hit apply, and now I can see everything in my model again. We have selection filter by status display as well. So if I do the selection filter and I drop that down to by status display, you'll now see that there's a status display that I can have that it doesn't affect what's shown, but rather what's selected or it can be edited. So let's say I'm working on my stairs over here and I wanna make sure that I only select my stairs. To make sure, I could do select members when any of these conditions are true. I could drop this down. And for member status, I'm going to get to member type in a second, but you will see there are, there are a whole bunch of different options for my members. There's setbacks, minus dimensions. I can add moment loads on each end, rolling radius. There's a spiral offset that I can select now. Even getting into my members or material status, I can do for main material or material type now. And there's also different statuses for bolts, holes, and welds. But now getting back to the stairs, if I go to member status, member type, and stairs, and click OK, then I can only select my stairs highlighted there. Moving on for my selection list, or actually moving on to my status display first. So let's say I want to load and just see my sequences broken up into different colors. I'm going to change this back to default. And I'm going to come down here and browse for my status configuration and find that on my desktop. So now my sequences are broken up into different colors. Then I can come in here. I see that didn't get applied. Let me just go ahead and load that again. So there's different things for opacity too. So my cyan, right, there's a checkbox here. So I could 
determine how much I could see through or how much it's going to be opaque, I guess, of that specific um, status. Let's say like magenta. I come in here and I turn that to like, I bring that down to 1 or 1 1.9. If I hit apply, then you can see that you can basically see through that. I could do the same thing with my um, priority 3 for sequence 3. I could turn that up to 0 0.7 and hit apply. And you can see that it's almost solid, but you can see transparent just still a little bit. Go ahead and click OK. Now I can also apply that, like I said, for uh, my selection list. So let's say I want to detail these members, or I could detail submaterial as well, and I could apply specific status displays. So I come over to my detail members. Now in the bottom right corner, there is a status display. If I check that on and load that sequences one I had, you can now see that my beams or my members are broken out into the coordinating colors of the sequence that they're in. I could also do that for maybe I just wanted to see my beams that are in sequence one. I could set up a status display for that and then load it here instead of coming into the hide button. The next we have is status select. So what it's going to do is you would be applying a status display and then it's automatically going to select those members or that status that applies. So I can come to my model pull down and do status select or SE on my keyboard. Or I can go to my options, toolbar configuration. My command group, I'm going to drop that down to model. And then come down here and there's status select. So I'll drag that off. And while I'm here, I'm going to also do the dimension clearance, which I'll come back to next. I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to load this. And it's going to say select members when any. And I just want my member status, member type. I just want my beam selected. So I can say select members when any are beams and click OK and it automatically highlights my beams. So you used to have to do that or you can still do it through advanced selection or you can apply it through the status select. The next thing we have is our dimension clearance. A lot of engineers might use this but if I snap to the surface of this it's going to find the closest dimension between two materials selected or two polygons. So if I click on this dimension clearance and select two polygons here, and right click OK, it finds the nearest clearance or it finds the closest dimension in between those two polygons. We can also hide selected or hide unselected or show members as well. So let's say I was trying to work on this beam down here and these were in my way. So I could just select these specific beams and right click and I could do hide members. So hide those members and then I can continue working on these members down here. Once I'm finished with them, I can right click and just click show members. So you might think that your members have disappeared out of the model, but all you have to do is right click show members. You can also apply model dimensions. So maybe I want to apply model dimensions on these members right here. So I'm going to select those specific members and right click and I'm just going to hide all my unselected members so I can only see these members that I'm going to be working on. One example might be that I want to I'm going to go ahead and just turn off my status display. So I can do 
dimension add by over on the left side here there's add dimensions there's also a model pull down and then there are dimension add you can erase all you can load or save so these model dimensions will be saved until your modeling session is closed and so if you always wanted to see them you could always load them so I'm just gonna click add and locate my points So it's kind of hard to see right now but if I select it you can see that I have um, custom bolt spacing here so if I wanted to see those always I can rotate out and it will show them as well maybe I needed to send a picture of this to my engineer I'm just gonna snap to the surface and add in some dimensions if I add in an extra dimension let's say I click down here and I'll rotate out so let's say I picked a dimension I don't need, I can just hit delete, and it will delete that off of there. So then I could send this to my engineer, like an RFI. I'll just do a print screen since this wouldn't actually be included with an RFI. And then I could just take a little screenshot of that and send that to my engineer to see if that will pass. You can copy members in between two models. So let's say I have a stair. Let's go to my mezzanine. Remember, I hid my members, so I just need to right click and show members once I'm finished. So I have a stair here, and I wanna copy that to another model now what this does is it will create like a behind the scenes it will create a temporary job where those members are going to be stored to it doesn't have to just be one member it could be this entire job for example and then this would also be per user so i have my specific stair and i right click and then i can do copy to clipboard I need to locate my reference point and then it copied that specific stair. I could also do that model member and there is also copy to clipboard. Now let's go into another job quick. I'll go into modeling and I'll go to my mezzanine floor. And I'm going to right click and paste from clipboard. I locate my reference point. Um, let me just throw in a construction line really quick. Okay. So now I'm right click and paste from clipboard. Locate my reference point. Um, it looks like I probably could have moved that up. But you will see that it created that stair in there. So then I would just have to move that up. I think I just created the wrong reference point there. So moving back to the original. We're going to now move on to components. So there's a base cap plate stiffener that I'm going to start off with. So I'm just going to select this column and do component add. Do my base or cap plate stiffeners. So we have flange stiffeners and then we also have web stiffeners here. So I do want it to add my flange stiffener. My stiffener orientation I'm going to put at my bottom. You can have it also be at the top for a cap plate stiffener or both. I'm just going to have mine be at the bottom here. 
My number of flange stiffeners, I'll have it leave it at two for now. My flange width, or sorry, full width stiffener, I'll come back to this. The offset will be from the center. We have the height. You can calculate the width automatically. So that's grayed out. If you wanted to make your own, you could just uncheck that. Same with the thickness. We have a bottom corner operation and a top corner operation, so you can clip, cope, or none. And then we have weld options here. And then the same with our uh, web stiffeners. So right now I'm just going to leave everything at how it is and click OK. And you'll see that now it is added to my flange and my web. I'm going to edit this, and let's say I'm going to change this to a full width stiffener from my flange stiffeners, and then I'm going to come down for my web stiffener and turn this to 1, and my offset, I'll just put that at 2. So now you see it goes full width for my flange stiffeners, and then for my web stiffener, I offset it from the center at 2. If I ended up having... Let me come down here, my number of web stiffeners and turn that back to two and left my offset at two, they would both move towards the center two inches. Or just, sorry, both move towards the center. We have for pipes, do the same thing. We have our stiffener orientation. I'm going to put that at my bottom. My number of stiffeners, I'll put six. We have an angular offset that would be the same as like the more tab in your uh, auto base cap plate schedule. Or base cap plate schedule, sorry. And then we have our height, our width. Maybe I want that two and a half. We have the same operations or options that we had from before. I'm just going to click OK. So now you see that it puts 6 in there. That's probably a little excessive, so I'm just going to drop that back down to 4. And then I'm going to put an angular offset of 45. And then the last one we have is for HSSs. We have for our long depth side, and then we have for our short depth side. For my long depth, I don't need one, so I'm just going to uncheck it. And then for my short depth side, I'm going to change that to a full width stiffener and click OK. And then it put in a full width stiffener for me. Now, coming back to, I guess it works for any of these, but coming back to this one, let's say I needed a third stiffener in here. All I needed to do was I can just add this again for um, the base cap plate stiffener. Locate the member to add it to. So I just want a flange stiffener and at the bottom, and I'll just change that to one. And then I'm just going to take off my web stiffeners. I'm not going to add one there. So you can add it for any of them. This one I'm just going to show for the wide flange. Our next component is the beam flange to flange. So I'm just going to open up my second floor. This one works best if you do have member numbers turned on. So I'm going to add in that component of the beam flange to flange connection. Locate the member to add it to. I'll just select this bottom beam. Now this is where the member number comes into play. So this says member number 156 is this diagonal one. So my crossing member number, I'm going to turn that to 156. 
For my bolt options, I have a pattern of four bolts, which is what I'm going to be showing, or I can do two bolts staggered long or two bolts staggered short. We have our bolt type and diameter, and then our hole options for the supported and supporting member as, as well as the filler plate. You can add in a filler plate when required if it's over an eighth inch of a gap. So I added those in there. Moving on for this one, I did make sure that there is a gap that's greater than an eighth of an inch. And since it's a splice, I'm going to select both of these first and then run the component add, the beam flange to flange. My crossing member number is 122. Oops. I'm going to leave this at four bolts because it will put two bolts on each side. And click OK. So I added those in there. And then you can also see that I added a filler plate in there. You can put in a column stiffener at a column. So let's say I just want to add it along this column here. So it's the same thing as beam stiffener at beam. So we have fixed spacing, all of the same information. If I just click OK, and then it'll put those in there. A column stiffener at beam. So let's say over here, this would be perfect for when there's not a design for a connection. So you just put the stiffeners in at the column. So there's a column stiffener at beam. Locate the member to add it to. So we have here my stiffener end. I want it to be on the left end of the member. The column side, I'll just have that be at my near side. Add the stiffener to. I'm going to add it to both my bottom and my top flange. We have our stiffener, uh, bo bottom and top stiffener alignment. We have flush top, flush bottom, or centered. We have our thickness. I do want this to be full depth. My end preparation, I can do clip, cope, or fit exact. And then if I want to add a weld as well. And here, I added those in there. We now have a void space layout. So I'm just going to snap to the surface of this beam. This is like cut layout, but it's going to store your points, and they're also going to be editable. Depending on the points picked will affect the direction the void will go. So clockwise, if I pick my points clockwise, it will put a positive thickness will come out towards me or out of the screen. If I go counterclockwise, a positive thickness will go into the screen or away from me. If you put in a negative number, then it can go the other way. So for example, I go, went ahead and put in some construction lines here. I'll do component add and then void space layout. Locate the member to add it to. You will see that there's a corner rounding that I can put in here and I can pick any points, but I'm just gonna pick one and go in the counterclockwise direction. Now we have our thickness here, so that's going to go into the screen for positive. We'll go into the screen six inches. And then here we have my diagram. Over on the right hand side is the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And then we also have our view is in my X, Y. There are going to be X, Z, or Y, Z, and then the dimension by, it's by my origin point. I can do from previous point or the length and angle, which we'll get to the length and angle later on. So here's the points I picked. 
I'm just going to click OK. And you'll see that now there is a void. In my display options, I can turn the void off so I don't have to see it. So it just looks like a hole. Um, I can also edit these points. I can move them. So maybe I want to I'm gonna snap to the surface again. I can move this by just doing move component. I could move it to another member or I could just keep it on this member and move it over maybe two foot four. And I can also edit it. So maybe I wanted to bring this point down. Click OK. And it'll automatically update that. Now if I move stretch this member's left end, that component will move with it. So if I don't want that component to move with it, I can do it as an own member. So I do member add and then I could do void space layout that way as well. If I want to go ahead and maybe make a void for plumbing, I'm going to open up my second floor. And I put a construction line in here. And I also want to make sure in my Z, I want to come down from the top of steel maybe six inches. So negative six for going into the screen. And I want a void to go all the way across these three beams. So I'm just going to do member add void space cylinder and select how far I want this void to go. We have our piece mark. Um, my diameter I want to be three inches. We have our member, our left and right end settings. If I wanted to, I could have changed it here instead of the Z. So I'm just going to click OK. And you can see that it went through all of these members. Another way to hide this void, since it was added as a member, I can just right click and do that hide members. If I come in here, you cannot see that void. I ha can put in then for like maybe some duct work. I can put in a web penetration with stiffeners. Um, actually, I want to make sure. Make sure I'm at the center here. Okay. So component add, and then web penetration with stiffeners. Locate the member to add to. And I want to go ahead and clear this. And this would be the center of where I want the, that web penetration um, opening to be located. So we have our configuration. So we have configuration layout. So these are the different pictures I want. I'm going to just pick the right picture for now. The yellow will be my primary stiffeners. And then the magenta will be my secondary stiffeners. My location, I could have them be on both sides of my beam near side or far side. We have our material grade, our web opening. I'm going to come back to round later on, but I'm going to have this just be a square rectangle right now. We have our primary plate. We have plate center to void center. I'm going to change this void edge to plate face. I want this to go right along uh, the edge of that void, so I'm going to put zero for my dimension. Full depth is OK. And then I'm just going to click OK for now. So that is one example. Another, let's move on to the second one. We have, um, maybe I want to change it. So now you can see that my primary now go the other way. My dimension, maybe I want to change that to one and a half. So now it's one and a half inches away. And then the third example, I'm going to do the center. And this time I'm going to change it to round. 
change my diameter to 10, and maybe my distance from the top, I'll just do 2.5. For my dimension, I'll go ahead and just put 1.5 as well. Just like the other void space layout, I can go ahead and move that component. And it will update as well. The last thing we have is our extruded profile member. So this will be just like a member, but it's going to be extruded by the shape that you pick. So I'll do member add, extruded profile member. I'll select my left end and my right end. So I have my, I can put in a user description here. I can put in a remarks from the bill of material. We have our left end and right end setbacks what you can put in and we have our material thickness. So here I talked about that the dimension by, this one's gonna be by length and angle. So I have my first point, it's always gonna be at zero, 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 that starts at. And my second point, I'm just gonna click here and so I want my second point to be two inches. And now you can see the example is I could have one at four foot and then maybe at 45 degrees or the angle. So you'd put comma for the angle. So I'll do comma 45. So that's my second point. Now you can see it went from zero, zero, and now it's at a specific dimension. For my third, I'm going to put three comma 60. For my fourth, I'm just going to pick some points, and then I'm done there. Maybe I didn't want my third point to be there, so I can just move it over and click OK. And now I get the exact shape that I wanted, and then it's extruded. I can update that by maybe I don't want the seventh point. I can right click to delete and it will automatically update there. So the member line will be starting at the zero, zero, zero of the layout and there will not be any CNC for this member at this time. That concludes today's webinar over modeling enhancements. We have now covered the new display options window, model dimensions, selection filter options, status select, components, and copying members between mo models.